Yesterday, on November 8th, we had our third asteroid impact. Now, it didn't actually hit Earth, but it went in our atmosphere on the third rock from the sun, which is our planet Earth. Now, on January, we had one by Berlin, Germany, about 37 miles to the west, as you see on this map. So the asteroid you just witnessed was the first that fell on Earth, and it was 2024 BX1. And despite being the first of three, this was actually a very rare meteorite coming from the planet of Mercury, which is a gray planet. Most people don't realize this, but the reason the Mercury is gray in color is because it contains a high presence of graphite on the planet. So when a meteorite hits the planet and chunks fly off, they get intercepted and fly into our atmosphere occasionally, and here are albright meteorites that you're seeing here. According to this passage, it says albrights do not look like what people generally imagine meteorites to look like. Albrights look more like a gray granite and consist mainly of the magnesium silicates, enstatite, and forsterite. It contains hardly any iron, and the glassy crust, which is usually a good way to recognize meteorites, looks completely different than that of most other meteorites. Albrights are therefore dif difficult to detect in the field. To most of us, it just looks like a plain, boring rock, but these are very rare rocks. And this meteorite team of 100 researchers came and they found several pieces of albright, which broke off from that 2024 BX-1 asteroid that fell to the west of Germany, about 37 miles near a village called Ribbick. The next asteroid came on the night of September 4th, which happens to be the birthday of Bring Back Shane, one of Godspeed's sources, and it was called 2024 RW1, off the east coast of Luzon or the northern island of the Philippines. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Whoa! This asteroid had a high magnesium content, different from the other one, and was seen 250 miles away. It broke off in the Pacific Ocean. On September 26th of 2022, just one year after we launched our operations of Godspeed Ministries, there is an asteroid that was slammed in by a spacecraft, and it was called Dimorphos, that little moonlet that you see up at the top it rotated around Didymos, and that takes two years to go around the sun. So the surface of Dimorphos, which was a moonlet of Didymos, was made up of just basically a bunch of rocks, 6.8 million miles away between the orbits of Mars and Earth, and it was only 525 feet across overall, which was just amazing. This video is about DART, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, and that's just to protect planet Earth from incoming asteroids. So this was a test of what we could do as a human race against incoming asteroids. appreciate this moment that's coming. Yeah, and they've earned this. Um, it's just great to see them there. This is so cool. 
Lori, we hit another major milestone. We are now two minutes and a half from impact and SmartNav has stopped maneuvering the spacecraft. DART is now coasting toward Dimorphos and we hope into the history books. Absolutely. This will be, I'm sure you've heard it many times tonight, uh, humanity's first ever ever attempt at trying to move another celestial body and also our first attempt ever to execute a, a, a mission in the you know, sole purpose of planetary defense. So what an exciting, exciting time. Yeah, and I'm starting to see Dimorphos start to come into view there. You can see it starting to take shape. I'm starting to see individual boulders on Didymos. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable clarity of images We're there. Coasting on in, our projected mist distance is going to be about 17 meters. All right. <laughs> All eyes on this event. Space telescopes, ground telescopes from every continent on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Two minutes out. Does not look like one single rock to me. Oh boy, we're getting close. 14,000 miles per hour, Lori. 14,000 miles per hour, and remember, you know, uh, 45 minutes ago, 55 minutes ago, we couldn't even resolve this this object in space, and now we are, you can see us, zeroing in right on target. And we're now dropping the clock, and we'll go by loss of signal to confirm impact. Right. Yes. Imagine we'll get that loss of signal, and then we'll hear from Lena Adams again. Um, and letting us know that we've like been we'll successful. Know. I feel like that'll be a crystal clear <laughs> signal. I think so. I think we're starting to see more, uh, more resolution. In fact, look at that. Didymos has even gone out of the view. We're now just seeing Dimorphos. This is remarkable stuff. Oh my goodness, look at that. Looks like control systems settling down. Angular rates look really good. I think we're going to get the investigation team some good pictures. Wow. No, no, come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> oh. Starting to see those individual boulders there. You can see shadows uh, of the various rocks on the surface. Impact. It's amazing, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Looks to me like we're headed straight in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Eight, yeah. seven, oh, six, wow. five, four, three, two, one. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> oh, wow. Awaiting visual confirmation. All right. We got it? Waiting. Waiting. And we have Every impact, <laughs> a giant leap for humanity in the name of planetary defense. Woo. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. So the main focus of this project is the God of Chaos asteroid supposed to fly by Earth in 2029, which could pose a damaging risk for us. In October, which was last month, we had three asteroids that flew by, one which was the size of a city skyscraper that, if it were to hit Earth, could have ended a whole city. It was that large. Now, this is a graphic right here about all the different asteroids and asteroid belts. So, what most people don't realize is that between Earth and Mars are the orbits of three different asteroid belts. These asteroid belts are the Amor in green, the Aten in yellow, which is a very round orbit, and then the Apollo, which is another flattened elliptical orbit. The asteroid that happened to fall last night was from the Amor asteroid belt. Again, that's the one in green, and all of these three asteroid belts are between the orbits of Earth and Mars. Now, there is another main asteroid belt in between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter that most of you already knew about. The ones you didn't know about were probably the ones that I just showed you. And here's another look at that asteroid belt in between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. And then you've got the Kuiper belt in between the orbits of Uranus, 
or Neptune. Really, it's Neptune and Pluto. And here you can see Pluto with its moon, Charon, is actually in that Kuiper belt on this diagram here. The main asteroid you guys have probably heard of at the bottom, where it says number one, is the Sears asteroid. That's the one you learn about in astronomy. Here's another diagram of the Kuiper belt, and then even farther out is what's called the Oort cloud, which is way out there, but it's just fascinating. It's all tied in by our sun's gravity. Our sun is on the spectral class of G2V, which means it's a yellow dwarf, and it's estimated to be 4.6 billion years old at the creation of our solar system. Now there's something called solar minimum and solar maximum, and as you guys know, we are in solar maximum right now. This 11-year sunspot cycle began in December of 19, and it's expected to peak in July of 25, which is next year. And there is a possibility that we could be looking at something bigger, even 60 times bigger than the Carrington event of 1859. But for now, Bring Back Shane was able to take this picture on October 10th in Mineral Wells, West Virginia, of our Aurora Borealis.